I'm going to take in life. Never give up. Run for the tank. In every series, going home should provide a team with a momentum shift. Should being the operative word. Oh, a a thunderous reaction on the road. The proximity in the series is good. With Milwaukee only a short drive from Chicago and an all-star familiar with this town. I get a lot of love. They still see me as a young fella from Marquette. That advantage is tempered. We don't know if it's Bulls fans or Bucks fans. As another series shifts from Atlanta to Brooklyn, the crowd won't be quite as accommodating. It's going to be a tough two games on the road. We're going back home. Our confidence is high. Now it's time for us to hold serve at our place. A virtuoso Derrick Rose performance in Game 3 lifted the Bulls to victory in a double overtime thriller. Yes! Derrick Rose picked him for the ball game. He is feeling it. The Bucks haven't won a playoff series since 2001 and again find themselves one game from elimination. Maybe we didn't have the experience. We can't make those mistakes if we expect to win. The playoffs continue next on TNT. Jeff Teague and the Hawks had the best record in the East, including the best road mark. And this afternoon, they take their top-seeded act to Brooklyn. Darren Williams and the Nets have been in both games in the fourth quarter, but have nothing to show for it. Looking to break through at Barclays. Time for TNT NBA tip-off presented by Auto Trader, the Saturday afternoon edition. As we get set for the Hawks and Nets, followed by the Bulls and Bucks on TNT. Studio J in Atlanta, Ernie Johnson, Shaq, Kenny, Charles, everybody rested. Everybody have a good Friday off? Yes, we did, Ernie. Was it exciting? Yeah, we only had to watch three basketball games. Huh. But you, you did more than just watch basketball, I assume. It's chill. Because you gonna, No, that's all I did, watch basketball, because I knew you were going to ask me something about those games last night. Well, we will eventually, but I thought maybe you'd just relax. And you would. You didn't do anything, did you, yesterday? Nope. Ride your horse or anything? No. Did no. you play with your Tigers? No. <laughs> just just got tigers. He, okay. does, he has Tigers. Huh? That's, yeah, yeah, that's, I got man, I cut the grass yesterday. That's the best, best, best therapy. Man, that's the most therapeutic you thing You should have called me, Ernie. That's what I used to I, do. No, I school. love cutting the grass. That's what I used to do. Yeah, that's school. what I do as an adult. Um, <laughs> <laughs> More from these guys in the next half hour. But first, uh, we venture to Brooklyn, where the Nets were 19-22 and 22 this season, the only playoff team with a losing record at home. They did win seven of their last nine at Barclays, but one of those losses was to Atlanta earlier this month. We set the table for this one with the guy who will work the sidelines, David Aldridge. D.A., how you doing? Ernie, I'm good. Uh, the Nets are not quite as good, but as you mentioned, they were playing better at home down the stretch, even though they've lost five straight games overall to these Hawks right now. And Atlanta won the first two games of this series without playing at the dominant level it had played at during the regular season. The Nets feel like if they can just make some shots and stop turning the ball over, they can get back in this series. We got to not turn the ball over and, uh, you know, we got to keep making the right pass. You know, sometimes we get in traffic and when we should have made the pass. And I think if we make the pass early enough, guys will get in the rhythm and uh, be able to make shots. Yeah, it's a little frustrating, but, uh, you know, they, they did what they had to do. Uh, give them a lot of credit. They played hard. They, they were gritty down the stretch and, uh, you know, they took her home court. So now we got to return the favor. The bad news for the Nets is that Paul Millsap played much better in game two than in game one. He's not using the pad on his injured right shoulder. He's got more range of motion, and he feels like he can shoot the ball normally. Al Horford also played better in game two after dislocating his right pinky finger in game one. So the Hawks feel like they're close to being back to full strength physically. The Nets, on the other hand, are still working some guys back in the lineup. Mirza Toledovic will play. But keep in mind, he's been out of the lineup for almost three months after suffering blood clots on his lungs. He's working his way back in the lineup. But the combination of him not knowing some of the new sets that the Nets have put in during his absence and him trying to get his win back mean that his minutes will be somewhat limited here in Brooklyn today, Ernie. D.A., thank you very much. Have a good game, and we will uh, we'll yap at you later. Um, okay. Look, Brooklyn has outshot the Hawks in this series, 45% to 41%. Atlanta, though, plus 27 from three-point land. 
Brooklyn, as Lionel Hollins pointed out, has turned the ball over a lot. Uh, so they've, they've been in these games, and, you know, Darren Williams could have tied it late the other day. You see, you see Brooklyn breaking through today, Chuckster? I do not. I do well, not. Well, you, you, you had to think about that for, for a because, minute, obviously. You know, Ernest, sometimes I think we get fooled. I was, I was, you know I'm a big boxing fan. And, and I was talking to Emmanuel Stewart one night, and he was talking about, I said, man, this guy's going to be, be great one day because he keeps coming close to winning. He said, I don't think about it like that. He says, just because it's close, maybe they're not good enough. And Kenneth said before the series started, Atlanta's the number one seed for a reason. Brooklyn kind of moonwalked in. So uh, I thought they could win a game, but I don't see that anymore. Uh, when I look at Atlanta, um, Kenny, and I, and I wanted to ask you, as a shooter, I want to ask you ask, uh, this question of you. Because Lionel Hollins was asked, hey, how about Kyle Korver? Uh, how do you defend him? What kind of job are you doing on him? He said, hey, look, we're not talking about Steph Curry here. We're talking about Kyle Korver. You know, he can't do the things that the Curry can do is the point he was making. But does that insult you as a shooter if you're saying, well, yeah, you will defend him, but he's no Steph Curry? Well, then that is disrespectful in this regard. Because the way Kyle Korver scores is he works so hard. Well, and, and, Holland without, said, and Holland said that, yeah, he really moves without the ball, but he can't put it on the floor like that. Yeah, Steph but can. That's, that's the mistake that Lionel Hollins is thinking. Of. Because the way you, he moves without the ball, Steph moves with the ball. So this, it's the same effort. Yeah. So if you're sprinting, running off picks, it's, imagine you just had the ball. So the, Steph Curry is doing the same thing but he's just doing it with the basketball. So mentally, if you're guarding him, you have to be locked in the same exact way because if you're not locked in until he gets the ball, it's too late. So you have to guard him without the ball, imagining that he's dribbling because he's working that hard to get off. So that is the biggest mistake ever to think that he's not the same shooter Steph Curry is because he, he's a guy who can actually run around a pick and then catch it and shoot it. There are guys in this league who are just catch and shoot guys that they have to wait for someone to get double, double percent, double teamed. He doesn't have to wait to get a double team to occur. He can work his way open. That is a misconception, and that's probably the reason why he's still they, shooting the ball well. They call him Hawkeye. They, they call him Threesus. Uh, you can call him Threesus. the leading. Threesus. Threesus. I like that one. They call, but he, you can call him the leading scorer for the Threesus. Hawks in this series with 19 a game. Thaddeus Young stood up in the locker room the other day after the game and apologized to his Brooklyn teammates after going two, uh, one for seven for two points and said, look, fellas, I'm sorry I didn't give us anything. I mean, tonight. that was commendable, but, you know, it's not his fault. You know, it's a team game. They still have to take care of the ball. We still need more from Darren Williams. You know, I'm starting to think what Paul Pierce said was correct. Paul Pierce said he didn't like the pressure. These are moments right here where you have to step up. And this guy is too good, been around the game too long and only have two points. And you got to get it to your big guy. He's averaging 18 10. He's shooting 64% from the field. You know, he missed a couple games. You know, he didn't start the whole season, but he has fresh legs, aren't he? Guy shooting 64%. Get him the ball, stop messing around. Yeah, we could have, should have won those two games, but we didn't. This game right here is going to tell me a lot because Kenny and Chuck knows there's two types of team. There's a team that says, okay, they did what they're supposed to do. Now we get two. Then there's another team saying, hey, let's just go play hard get these two games over so we can go to Cancun. So this game today is going to tell me a lot about Lo Brooklyn. Lopez made more shots in game two than he took in game one. And so he, he got more looks. But you know, Lionel Holland says, look, they're taking the paint away from us. Atlanta's sagging back and, and daring us to beat them from the outside. Well, somebody got to make some shots, whether it's Darren Williams, whether it's Joe Johnson. I mean, because they can't stop Lopez. Atlanta plays a bunch of small power forwards, undersized guys. Lopez is going to dominate if he gets the ball. But in fairness to what you just said, Ernie, guys have to, they're not respecting the shooters. And uh, they not, they're not respecting Darren Williams. They're not respecting Thaddeus Young. They're not respecting Joe Johnson. And unless those guys, and the only way to really, in my opinion, offset that is speed up the tempo of the game. Because layups, layups, layups and fast break shots are a lot easier to make, easier to get in the rhythm than playing in a half court set. Atlanta's got them 28-10 in fast break points. Uh, in paint points, it's the Nets 92 to 70. Wait, they got down. 10 points? 10 points. In two games in fast, fast break, break? Yeah, exactly. Well, they, they were way down on the list uh, in the regular Clearly. season. Clearly. By the, by the way, the Hawks trying to go up 3 nothing in a best of seven for the first time since 1970.
when they were in the Western Division semis against Chicago. Uh, I don't know, but we, I, I recall they beat, uh, that may have been the Jerry Sloan, Tom Borwinkle Bulls back then with the Hawks uh, and Norm Van Leer on that Chicago team, I believe. Um, but that's just my fading memory. Uh, we'll be back with more in a second. Okay. Kenny, the Jets showing the way right now at 255. Got, got Brooke Lopez going today. Who's winning right now? Uh, mm -hmm. That's what I just said. Kenny. Oh, I just want to like I, As long as I'm beating Chuck, I'm happy. Hey, I, made, I made a nice move last night. What? I was in, I was, listen, Kyle Clark. You, you were Kyle, last going into last night, and now you're last. Yeah, great move. <laughs> <laughs> but DeMar the, the DeRozan helped me. He had a good game. Yes, he did. It's hey, early, Chico, man. Imagine where hey, he was Chico, to have a meeting I had a, in my I had a bad, I did, I had a bad night to take Blake Griffin. Didn't, yeah. uh, didn't go monster for him. But uh, congratulations. I have had a bad night. Uh, but we could have gave you the whole early. clip of team. You it's still would have yeah, gave. I know. <laughs> it has been uh, 14 years since the Bucks won a playoff series, and now they're a loss away from being KO'd in the first round for the sixth straight time. The Bulls, of course, uh, are on course for a heavyweight Eastern Conference semifinal against the Cavs, and they can punch their ticket later this afternoon here on TNT. We get more on Game 4 from Ali LaForce. There are plenty of division championship banners on the wall at the Bucks training facility. The problem is there is only one in the last 28 years. That was also the last time that the Bucks won a playoff series. So when the team had the option of a full practice on Friday, the answer was of course yes, because not only would they love to extend this series, they also have the future of the franchise in mind. Well, I think uh, you look at game one, uh, it wasn't us. Uh, you look at game two on the road, we can play better for uh, three and a half quarters. And then uh, last night we played well where we had the opportunity to uh, to win the game, you know, two times. So that just shows that we're getting better. No one believed, you know, in the beginning of the year that we're going to be in this situation. And so, you know, we didn't win last, last night game, but uh, I believe, you know, you know everybody played hard, everybody tried his best. You know, and that's what all that matters. I guess it's a lot of hope. Uh, you know, also we got to know that teams are going to you know, we're going to have a bullseye on our back, and teams are not going to come in thinking this is just a regular Milwaukee Bucks. So we have to play even harder and play even better next year. And, uh, you know, we'll get some key pieces back with Jabari, and uh, you know, we'll be ready to go. Well, I think uh, the experience any time, the process that we're going through, the longer the series goes, is better for us going forward. Uh, but for us, it's to, you know, get it back to Chicago so we have, you know, to win game four. The Bulls, on the other hand, had the luxury of not practicing after going up 3-0 and chose to rest their players for Game 4. In Milwaukee, I'm Ali LaForce. <laughs> John, hey, John, yeah. John Henson hey. bite you could have played hey. after the game hey, as well, looking ahead to Can we it. please play that again? <laughs> please, play, please play that again, John, America. John's thinking it. about next year. <laughs> yeah, it should be. be. No, that North Carolina, guys. No, man. <laughs> That's surprising because John's a good player. Man. Yeah, he is but, a good player. Yeah, but he should be thinking about next year. Next year. But even, and even if the question is, hey, aren't you building for next year, you got to say, no. look, I'm not talking about next year. I'm talking about Game 4. Game but 4. There you go. Uh, you know, I, I, was, uh, I was wondering, I thought about you guys, and I said, 3-0 deficits in the playoffs. I don't think that's probably happened very often to, to you guys. Chuck, it happened once in 85. Kenny, once in 96. And me six, six times. Six times yes. you've been 3-0. Give yeah. me the mindset of a, a team down 3-0 in a series. How much belief is there that you're not done? You're talking about, you're talking about, you're talking about up, you're talking about up or down? No, you're down. You've been yeah, down 3 nothing. Again, there's, you know. Six times? Six you know, times. Yeah, in four rings, something you don't know about. <laughs> yeah, you got These guys are muttering to themselves just over there. Six while you're times. trying to answer. You know what? And I got more rings. Hey, Ernie, in fairness, combined. when I was down 3-zip, that was the best of five series. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever been down three zip in a seven game okay, series. Chuck, you know what? I learned I, wait, from my failures and come back to win championships. Well, clearly, you fell a like lot. you. No, early uh, in his career, like honestly, yeah, you know, we early. actually said that yeah, because we said early in his career, he had, when he went out, they would lose. Yeah, I always got four zip. Yeah, every time. Every time. Every and time. so we said, if we can get them, we actually yeah. said that in here. You won one. You won said one if we game. Get them, yeah, his one teams have always done that. So, we know, had to, had to, so how much belief is there in a locker room? To answer your question, there's two types of teams. There's teams that are great teams, like uh, Kenny's Houston teams that never underdomest the heart of a champion. We're going to go get one at a time and try to win it. But there's other teams that it's over. Thinking about it next year. One, two, three. Cancun. Yeah, I've heard that. So, yeah, me too. I've heard that too. Aaron, it's humiliating to get swept. Uh, it's humiliating. 
Uh, Hal just told me, I actually was a best of seven, but we won game four. Because if it was a best of five, it would have been yeah. over. No, if yeah, yeah, three yeah. but I'm going to tell you something, man. But it's humiliating to get swept. That happened to me six times, then? Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> that, you were, that you were down three nothing, but you did win once. Uh, they won a game? Yeah. Uh, Ooh, way the, to fight through it, Jack. The Bucks way have. Way fight through it. The Bucks <laughs> have. One, two, three. Cancun. <laughs> the, Bucks have, the Bucks have no starters shooting 40% in this series against Chicago. Um, well, I mean, things do not look good on the Milwaukee. This, this is why. This is why I always Packers start. The, the, the Packers got traded camp this week. They can go That's watch Aaron Rodgers sling it around. <laughs> well, this is one of the reasons, Ernie, where I picked the Chicago Bulls. If healthy, healthy. You know, we know they made a glass. We just hope that it's plexiglass. So, but if they defend, you know, they defend you. Every other team talks about, oh yeah, you got to stop us. You got to stop us. Chicago at, at points in the game says, we will stop you. Noah says, when I have my best game is when I defend. Jimmy Butler at times, before this year, when he says, when I have my best games is when I defend. Yeah. You know, Gasol says, I'm a defender. Oh, so, stop it. No, default, he's a, he's a, he's, he's a weak stop side it. defender. Oh. He comes across and blocks right, shots. Right, he's weak. You know, uh, listen, but I, I actually, <laughs> they have guys who defend. I see, I disagree with you. You don't think they have guys who defend? Well, they do have guys who defend. I don't think this is the reason. Because Milwaukee's just missing shots. Yeah, this, the reason this Bulls team is better than they had in, in the last five years, number one, they're bigger. They were too small. Uh, with Carlos Booz and Noah, they, they're both undersized power forwards, and they got beat up, and they wasn't getting offensive rebounds. But this is the best team offensively, because if you go back and look when they were winning MVP, it was Derrick Rose, and that was it. Now Butler can get you 20, uh, Gasol can get you 20. No, Noah's going to do what Noah does. But they're still a good defense. They are a good defense Charles. team, but yeah. you still have to and be able to score. When they were, well, I'm about, that, you're that's, right. That's yeah. what makes them dangerous. That, they're still a good defensive but, team, and they're uh, better uh, offensive. But I'm saying that that's the change they made. Because yeah. yeah, you're not going to hold every team to 80 points. And that's what they used to do. Right. But now they can actually score 100 points. And listen, you, but in those key moments, yeah, but you, know, you, you don't have play, you do have to play defense. No, no, no. Certain teams aren't able. Yeah, but I know you that. Got Todd I'm, Gibson, you got Noah, and you got but, Butler on but the you floor still with Derrick to, Rose when he's when he's moving but, well. Those are four yeah, really you, good defenders. But you, yeah, but still you know, have a lot to, of times, a lot of times when teams miss shots, the other teams take the credit for playing good defense. For example, in the overtime game the other day, mm -hmm. it wasn't really good defense, bad shot. O.J. Mayo took a bad shot, and the other kid took a bad shot. You know, you got to get better shots. So a lot of times, you know, we could be, you know, misconstrued by what's really going on. I just think, you know, Milwaukee's missing shots. However, they still don't have a chance. The, uh, the thing about the Bulls offense, too, and you liked this number the other day, after two games. Now after three, they've assisted on 81 out of 109 field goals, which is 74%. The league lead was just under 68% by incredible. the Hawks. So but, you're assisting on 74% of your made but buckets. Ernie, one thing, and I said, this, I said this three months ago, the biggest adjustment was for the Bulls was going to be was Derrick Rose going to have uh, voluntary cooperation. He used to be a one-man band. He's not a one-man band anymore. Butler's an all-star. Gasol's an all-star. He got to he got to pick and choose when he's explosive. Uh, like like I say, three years ago it was just him and they couldn't score. They just go hold you down to 80 points. But now you have to take advantage of the extra weapons you have. Oof, nice. And they're a totally different animal. And I I can always tell what, how Derrick Rose feels when he falls in love with his jump shot. I know he's he he relies on that too much. But when he's going to that basket, that's when he's in full. That rolls in full bloom. Yeah, I, I think. You know how I said that, Ernest? Oh, I saw bloom. what you did there, and I was okay, in absolute awe. Well, he rose to the occasion. How's that? Yeah, like I it says right that. there. Yeah. It's but, on, uh, on the graphic. Just, well, you can't come up with your own stuff? No. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it took you only, and God been in the league five Kenny, years. I got one. Said it. After they win the championship, he can sip on rose. Oh. oh, that was good, Chad. <laughs> hey, one, two, Thanks, three. Chico. Cancun. Yeah, what? There we go. Uh, Bulls and Bucks later. Meantime, it's the Hawks and the Nets from Brooklyn with a 310 Eastern tip. Y'all, y'all comments. Roses smell like poo poo. <laughs> Roses really smell like poo poo. Wow. <laughs> Where's the cricket sound effect? He caught it late. Yeah, yeah. caught it late. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta be an outcast fan. <laughs> Time to put uh, Matt and Chris into motion. Go, guys. Go. Go. Saturday schedule. It's called a human fade. Here on uh, 
TNT. Nice Streetwork RoboCup. Atlanta and Brooklyn. Why just show how he does it, man? Chicago and Milwaukee. Because the they're stations, hard working. They don't no, get the, nearly the credit they deserve biting, they for the ground they cover in this studio, Matt and Chris. Awesome stuff. Man, we need some games, man. There's our, there's Come our. on, Bucks. Come on, to Brooklyn. <laughs> Last night. Beat down, Ernie. Kawhi oh, Leonard beat 32 down. in a 173 believe now, Chuck? A win over the Clippers. I'm still with you, Clippers. You don't, Paul you don't believe Pierce. Now. I'm still with truth? you, Clippers. Uh, okay. The truth. Yeah, you still you know, you think Paul Pierce over ain't really a good finisher either. In okay, true. Yeah. And then James Harden Ooh, went to oh, 42. Exactly. That's the playoff high for this season. Sideways. They beat the Mavs by a deuce. You're trying to get Take a three MVP, huh? lead. Oh, no, is that the MVP is over? Uh, the voting's over. Yeah. Oh, later, over. Yeah. later on ESPN, Warriors and Pelicans playing Game Four with uh, Golden State looking for a sweep, and then you got Memphis trying to take a three nothing lead as they go to Portland. NBA, by the way, says that Steph Curry was fouled. That was stupid of when he NBA. tied when he tied the game the other day. Was, was. That was that was stupid. No, they, no, but they do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. but that's the way. Why would you do hand the referees up, out to dry we, like that? Because they they've done that for years. They admit what? when a mistake is made, they say, "Look, we realize that there was a mistake. You uh, should have gone to the foul line." They think, still won the game. I understand yeah. that, yeah, but they missed it. Yeah, but I'm t listen, so they I don't think it. they should have hung the referees out to dry. That's the job. Steph, Steph, by the way, says that is the reason he quit playing football. Is yeah, Curry yeah, traveled on the three late in the game, that too. Far. Uh, I, that too. I just think they, listen, uh, he was foul, I admit that, but I didn't like them hanging the referees it's out. Not hanging, it's, if it's you don't not, admit yeah. your own mistakes, then people think that you're doing things shady. Uh, they, well, that that, that makes people think you're doing something no, shady. No, you're admitting your mistake. No, like no, no. Human. I actually, and in the moment, I, I, he I, made a mistake. But if you just shut your mouth, and let's say that they lose that game, and you say nothing, then they go, Yeah, but then you could have a, a Donahue so, situation. So if you, if you had a, if they, if they had a lost that game, you think they would have released yes. that No, they've done that They've done this year. I don't think that. They've done it in years they, past. They have. They, they say, hey, look, it. traveling hey. should have been hey. called or something should have been called yeah. or we missed a we, foul. We can, you know, that's. We, we can disagree. I just yeah. think they hung the refs out to drive. But you, okay. then, like, it, it, it erases the Donahue effect. Like, oh, we're Well, they didn't call it, so it's irrelevant. No, but it's, it's saying that we manage our people <laughs> I mean, and let them know that they didn't do a good job. There's there. no disputing the fact that it doesn't do anything to change the outcome, but it just it just say, look, we we realize we, we make mistakes. I have another we thing. Right. We admit Same this thing here. Yeah. Monty Williams goes, comes on the press conference and said, I told my guys to foul. They didn't execute. He didn't have to say that. You could say he hung his guy. No. He's saying that this was our game plan, and we're open with it, and this is what should have happened. Well, That's it. Well, first of all, he was asked that question. Yeah. So the NBA asked the question, like, uh, the was that a foul? <laughs> That's not appropriate. <laughs> Why are you hitting that at that point? <laughs> he didn't know the button. Yeah, if, you want yeah, him, right. if you want him to, to stop talking, you have to hit this button. Because this is the end of the, the Oscars oh, music. Okay. Hey, there's okay. the music now. Got it. Got Stop it. talking. Right. Not, oh my God! Y'all just wasted cash on everything around here. <laughs> this, yeah, this this cost a lot at Radio Shack. So anyway, uh, you stunned that the Clippers got beat like that? Yeah, stunned. I mean, Ernie, you're looking at the, like I, I think Doc Rivers said it best. Spurs are better. No, he, oh. first of all, I'm, I, listen, I he said I, I, listen, I'm still, I picked the Clippers and I'm sticking with them, but I think the thing that disturbed me the most, and Doc Rivers said it, they, they gave up their competitiveness. Uh, that's, that, that, that's what surprised me the most. They didn't compete. Yeah. Uh, and, and when your coach says that, it was kind of like it took the spirit away yeah, and that said, kind of yeah, thing. You yeah, you can't take your spirit away. Because yeah. uh, it's interesting, you know, we're talking about these three old things. I'm curious to watch. Uh, the Pelicans today, the Pelicans can't, they might, they're not going to win this series. But I think it's, it's humiliating to get swept. I want them to compete. I want the same thing for the Milwaukee Bucks. I don't, listen, sometimes a team just better, yeah. but you just don't ever just pack it in. But adding to that New Orleans equation is the way they lost game three. I mean, does that take, it, does that make it even tougher to come out in game four and, and stay alive in a series? It makes it tougher because all the pressure is on them. And, you, you know, they let the game get away. They didn't execute the game plan. And Stephen Curry hit an unbelievable shot. And, you know, they kept fighting to come back in. But, you know, it's, it's just they're gaining experience. You know, that's not always an excuse. But, you know, when you're a young team, you have to try to make not make mental mistakes. You know, you got to take care of the ball. You know, when you have a 25-point lead against anybody, you should never lose that game. I don't care what quarter, you should never lose the game. But, you know, a lot of guys got trigger happy. They stopped giving the ball to Ryan Anderson. And uh, the Browns. But Kenny had a great point the other night. It's about execution. 
You got to execute down the stretch. Go back to game two against the Clippers. They did not execute down the stretch. The Milwaukee Bucks have had a couple of chances in that game. They did not execute. And you just have to execute in the last five minutes of a game. Without question. And I'll end it this way. It wasn't it, with the Spurs with the champs last year. Weren't yes. they one game away from hey. the second seed? Hey. Do Aren't you, they do, healthy? Wait. Strategically <laughs> healthy. Do you, do you hear that means? Well, I just up. want to thank the Academy <laughs> for the champs. And for the there's, champs. There's three I reasons. respect the champs. Uh, Kyle Corver and the Hawks. No way they're going out in the first round. At the Barclays. Come on, Doc Rivers. I pick you. Don't Johnson make me look good. And the Nets here on TNT. Who's your favorite announcer? Ernie Johnson is good. Ernie Johnson is good. Ernie Johnson is the best. It's Shaquille O'Neal. My, my favorite has to be Kenny Smith. Yeah, Kenny Smith I like. Yeah. Except when he when he runs back to that board. I, you know, that's just, yeah, that's disturbing. It's not a good look. Is it? Yeah, they should do a, just a jump cut. You know, just like, hey, guys, I'm going to go and go to the board. And then they jump cut and they, they just like put in a karate movie. <laughs> And then, like, then you cut back. And and it's there. really a long run. It's a long it run. Be right for him. Behind My favorite announcer, I love Charles Barkley, but if you're going to be a spokesperson, you got to know how to spoke. Yeah. I never thought I would hear uh, somebody who went to college say terrible on TV. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. I, I know we ran that the other night, but that it's might just be one too... of the funniest lines <laughs> ever. Too good. That was D.L. Hoogie's line right there. If you're going to be a spokesperson, you got to know how to spoke. <laughs> <spoke. laughs> Oh. You say you can't, a guy who went to college can't say terrible? Yeah, terrible. Okay. That's okay, DL. That's okay. That's okay. That, that might be what I gotta go. Oh, I know. We uh, done? Yeah, we are done. Uh, we'll see you at halftime. Hawks and Nets straight ahead. On Ernie, clear. Ernie, that lets you know they don't respect the Nets right there. He's taking a nap. Uh, he's getting stretched, Taking man. a nap before the game. He's getting Come stretched. Come on, man. That's totally disrespectful. <laughs> hey, uh, say, Look at that. He's man. taking a nap over there. Uh, <laughs> I take a nap before the game on the court. <laughs> <laughs>